Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Alex Harshman here with Wholesale to Freedom. For those who don't know what this channel is all about, it's about wholesaling real estate, uh, giving out information, hacks, tips on how to get your deals done and close and how to talk to sellers, uh, as well as some entrepreneurship and business related things as well. So today we're gonna be talking about the three things that I wish I knew when I first started um, and three things I think will really help you guys, you know, kind of get the mindset shift that you need when you're first starting out and how to plan for the future as you scale up. Um, some things that, you know, the first thing I would say is when I first started, you know, it's always, you're looking for that first deal. Um, maybe you've done your first deal, then you just on to the next deal, right? And you're always searching for that next step or that next level. But when you're really starting out, you're just kind of looking for that first deal and that's the only thing you're really taking into consideration. And rightfully so, because wherever focus goes, energy flows. And that's where we need to focus on is getting that first deal just to prove to ourselves we can do it and the, just to prove, you know, kind of show us the experience on how to do that. With that being said, um, there's some things that I, you know, didn't even think about when I was getting my first deal done. And uh, that's number one is be consistent in marketing. So once we, if we focus on getting that first deal, we finally get that first deal what we tend to do is we stop marketing because we're so focused on now selling that deal, right? And again, rightfully so, this is what our focus is. But some of the things we should be planning for in the future is to keep that marketing consistent. So whether you're you know, spending two, three hours a day uh, selling that deal, you need to keep spending one to two hours a day for the marketing if you're doing any active marketing, like cold calling, things like that. I have a whole video on how to market for free versus the paid way. If you haven't checked it out, it's up here. Go ahead and check that out. But you wanna keep that marketing consistent, whatever it is, even through the period of which you're selling that deal. Because what you want to happen is, once you close that first deal, you wanna have another deal lined up or potentially a couple other deals lined up. What you don't wanna happen is that what I did is I closed that first deal and then I'm just kinda of sitting there like, all right, now what? I gotta rinse, repeat, do it all over again, whereas I could have had that traction building and that momentum going, that pipeline flowing. So that's number one, is keeping your marketing consistent. That's one of the top things I would recommend. Number two, run your business or it will run you. And what I mean by that is you wanna start developing systems and processes to help automate the business because you might want to say you're an entrepreneur, you might want to say you're this big business owner, you know, who's buying houses, wholesaling real estate, but honestly, until you hire that position out, all the items that you're doing on a daily activity, you're actually just an employee within your business. So if that's what you wanna do, more power to you. But for me, I wanted to scale this business up and automate it so that I could have the time freedom to spend with my family, my friends, going on vacations, whatever it may be. You know, I wanted to have that time freedom. So you gotta run your business like a business or it will run you. And you can do that by hiring VAs. I have a video on how I you know, did that as well. Some of my inputs on how, how I'm hiring VAs at the moment. Then also just developing, you know, step-by-step -step recording everything you do. So if you're cold calling people, record how you cold call people, whether you write it down in a journal or you record yourself. And the reason why we wanna document each step in each process is it makes it so much easier to automate it in the future, especially when we're trying to give out um, what's called SOP, Standard Operating Procedures, on how that position or that job is fulfilled. If you've been taking notes the entire time and you're like, hey, uh, in, the, in order to find leads, I gotta go to PropStream and download the leads, and I gotta do it with these filters, and I gotta do it you know, after I export it to Excel to put it into this uh, skip tracing company. You know, you wanna write down all the steps for that to be done that you're doing, so that way you can give it to your employee in the future and they know, boom, step by step, what you're doing. So that's number two, is you wanna treat your business like a business. And number three, and this is the hardest one, you know, the hardest pill to swallow, and especially when you've done deals before, and you're used to getting big checks and you just got this ego sometimes, it gets in the way, is hogs get slaughtered and pigs get fed. Or pigs get fed and hogs get slaughtered. And what that means is basically don't be afraid to sacrifice a little bit of money to get the deal done if that was your only option. You know, 
always explore other options first, but don't completely throw the deal away because you're not getting the amount that you want. For example, I had several deals with sellers who I knew I could make these big old checks and I was like getting the best deal ever. And they were asking me, can I get a better price? And I said, well, we already agreed on the price, you know, uh, you know, I was going to make like 30 grand or whatever on it. And I was like, no, you know what? No. And then all of a sudden they ghosted me and they signed a contract with somebody else and they closed with somebody else. And you might be thinking, well, you can get a memorandum of contract and put a lien on the property, but why don't that one, you know, when you're starting out, you don't have a whole lot of time to do things like that. You don't want to spend your energy on just focusing on a deal that might not work out because you made this rookie mistake of maybe sacrificing $2,500 to 5,000 just to appease the seller. And sometimes you can just ask them, Hey, what amount works for you? And sometimes it's like a thousand dollars and they're like, yeah, I just, you know, I was hoping to get like two grand more. And you can imagine if, if I would have asked that question and the seller said, yeah, I want two, two grand more and I lost 30 grand because of it. Yeah. You bet you, I would have been kicking myself in the butt, but chances are they probably offered a lot more. Um, but regardless, you know, I could have tried to work something out and also on the JV end side, or maybe on the wholesaling side, on the buyer side, you might be getting this awesome check and all of a sudden this buyer comes in he's a solid buyer but you know he would perform and you say uh you know he was like half of what you're asking you know in your assignment fee you haven't had any other offers but this guy's solid and you turn it down because maybe you're hoping to get 30 grand or whatever it is and you just you let that lead go and you let that deal go because you took too much time and now the seller wants to back out or now you can't find a buyer in time and you go back to him and he says well I actually already closed on the property because I didn't think this one was going to work out for us. It's happened to me guys. So what do I suggest instead is make something work. If they're a consistent buyer and you want to build this relationship and a solid relationship with your buyer, you know, maybe sometimes you have to take that $5,000 cut, whatever it may be. I'm not saying you always have to, and I always encourage making the most you can make, but if you have like no other traction or no other options, just go with it, get the deal done and work on the next one, right? Just build that relationship and prove to yourself and to them that you're a solid wholesaler is going to consistently bring them leads. And so it's it really, this business is a relationship business. So if you ruin those relationship businesses by being stingy, you're going to have a name and a reputation. Trust me. I worked with somebody who previously who may or may not have had this reputation. And I did not want my name associated with it. Um, you know, it, not just in this, in this career field or this, um, career of real estate, but in any other things as well, you know, they'd be stingy on, um, trying to take too much credit or something. You know what I mean? So don't ruin your reputation. And just because you're trying to make a few extra bucks when you when you really want to look at it in the long term sense and make the most of it. So. Those are the three things I wish I knew when I first started out because I would have implemented my business a little bit differently and I would have had a little bit better grip, grip on uh, scaling up because the last thing you want to do is get this deal done and then you have this constant up and down where you have leads and you don't have leads and you do have leads and you don't and you have too many leads you can't handle so now you got to uh, reduce your marketing and it's just this never ending battle so you have to eventually um, not only consistently market but you have to manage your business like a business and get some other people in there so that we, you can spend time doing what you need to do to make the business grow and be that entrepreneur instead of just an employee inside your business. And remember pigs get fed and hogs get slaughtered. Don't be a hog and don't try to get the most money you can and ruin that reputation and that, that, that person or that uh, relationship with that person. So as always, I hope you guys found value out of this video. Uh, I enjoyed making these. Please, please, please write some comments down below. If you have any questions whatsoever, I'll do a video on it, touch up on it. I love making them, helping you guys out. I've had a lot of great feedback from y'all saying my advice has helped and I want to continue to do that. I read the book, The Go-Giver, and I really, really believe in that principle. So see you all in the next one and thank you for watching.